coming to the imaging, uh, what do you see that uh, uh, this is basically in a four-year-old child, what do we see? This is the arterial phase imaging. We see that the aorta is enhancing. And then this is the venous phase image in which we see IVC and the aorta both are enhancing. And we see the portal vein also. Right. So what do we see? That uh, uh, comparative to the normal liver, the lesion is uh, not uh, is not much enhancing. But uh, when we come to the venous phase, we see that it is hypo-enhancing in comparison to the uh, uh, to the adjacent liver. So again, this is one finding that we should find arterial phase enhancement within this lesion, right? What are the characteristic uh, enhancement uh, findings in the hepatoblastoma? They show arterial phase, arterial phase hyper enhancement and washout on venous phase, right? So this is the classical imaging of HCC and hepatoblastoma. So there is a similarity between them, but there are also obvious differences between them. So that is why I was uh, telling you yesterday the importance of an early arterial phase and a late arterial phase. So uh, basically, uh, you understand that this arterial phase imaging is not showing any arterial phase enhancement. Why? Because we basically took a early arterial phase. We see the angiogram-like picture. The only arteries are identified are opacified and the contrast has yet to go from these arteries into the tissue which are supplied. So that is why if you want to actually see the real arterial phase enhancement, please tell your technicians to take an early, uh, the late arterial phase at 35 seconds. The portal venous phase or the hepatic venous phase washout is very easy to see. You just have to see the lesion is less enhancing as comparison to the adjacent liver. So we see that the lesion is well defined. So uh, well defined and is showing the washout and the patient is a young patient. So next thing that we do is to order a AFP level. So why are we, uh, why am I uh, so sure, uh, why am I advising an AFP level? As I told you, whenever you do a CT, you actually do not make a diagnosis of hepatoblastoma and uh, uh, AFP levels basically corroborate your findings. So as I said, out of 10 cases, 5 cases will be a hepatoblastoma. So inadvertently, uh, unless and until you are sure of some morphology, you should always advise the AFP level to be on the safer side. And uh, because if the AFP levels are rise, even if the lesion is cystic or it is solid or a partially cystic solid lesion, uh, if the AFP levels are high, then we are more sure that it is a hepatoblastoma. Once the hepatoblastoma is ruled out and you see a normal AFP level, that is when you uh, the clinician comes to you and uh, he asks you that what this might be. So that is where the other differentials come into play and your role as a radiologist is important at that time, right? So this is basically an idea to give you about the uh, histology. Uh, just to show you that there are some light areas and there are some dark areas and it is due to the varying amount of the glycogen and lipid that we talked about and that is why these lesions might show fat content, basically lipid content, which shows uh, uh, which shows high, uh, which uh, is basically removed on the out, out of face imaging and the lesions become hypoindex. So this is now we are looking at the mixed epithelial and the mesenchymal type of hepatoblastoma in a seven month old boy. So what do we see? We see this is the venous phase image and we see a large, basically, uh, we see a large mass which is hypoenhancing from the adjacent liver, right? And uh, what do we see? Some enhancing septa within the lesion, right? So, and this is a central necrosis. So, the concept of central necrosis is something that I want everybody to understand. What is central necrosis? So, this is basically a large tumor which is getting supplied by the common hepatic artery, whatever the right or the left hepatic artery, basically the right because this one is in the right. So, this tumor, when it becomes, it gains basically supply from the arteries, right? But the arteries at any age, they cannot match up with the tumor size. The tumors by their nature, they grow out of proportion in size too early. Right. So when the tumor is not able to catch up with the blood flow, so the central part is the first to lose the vascularity. Why? Because the vessel vascular supply is always from outside to inside. And that is why 
most of the tumors, the large tumors that you see at any place in the body, the necrosis always starts at the center because this part is uh, devoid of the vascularity because the, vas uh, the neovascularity which is developing within the tumor is not able to catch up with the size of the tumor and leading to necrosis of the central part. Right. So this same thing when we see on MRI, this is a T2 weighted MRI. What do we see that the lesion is heterogeneously uh, hyper intense with hypo intense septa within it and the central part it shows the necrosis. This is a post contrast sequence and we again see that the septas are enhancing and the central part is not enhancing. So uh, if you ask me if there is any classical imaging feature on, C on um, CT or an MRI, I will just tell you that you have to look at all the phases and if you see an arterial phase enhancement and a, and a washout on the venous phase, you can be you can think of hepatoblastoma in a child. But to be honest, on MRI, they can have... Um, they can have any kind of uh, morphology based on the content of the mass lesion. It can be T2 hyper intense. Mostly they are T2 hyper intense. Hyper intensity, if you see within the lesions, they are mostly secondary to hemorrhage or they can be some foci of calcification within the lesion. So these things you have to uh, you, you know, as you see the cases, uh, you have to know that every lesion is T1 hypointense and T2 hyperintense, right? So, when you write in an exam any question, so these are some basic points that you write for every question. And as uh, you can always mention, right, that the lesion is T1 hypo, T2 hyper with uh, some foci of if hemorrhage is there, the lesions, uh, the areas will become uh, T2 hypointense or have a variable presentation. So there is no need to actually learn how a particular lesion looks on MRI or on CT because uh, every lesion can have a varied presentation. What you should know is if you get a mass lesion in the liver, then how do you identify it is a hepatoblastoma based on its imaging characteristics, right? So if you see a large tumor, and uh, you see the washout on MRI or on the CT and you have the raised AFP levels, right? Without the AFP levels, a diagnosis of hepatoblastoma just on the basis of imaging is too far-fetched, right? People might question you that why are you giving a hepatoblastoma? So, as I have discussed, someone might uh, question me like uh, this is the lead, uh, this can be FNH also, right? So, on T2 weighted image, this might be uh, because this has a hyperintense scar and this lesion appears well defined and has a T2 hyperintensity. Why is it not FNH? So, the answer lies in the contrast. So, without contrast imaging, you just cannot differentiate the liver tumors. You have to have a multiphasic contrast imaging to differentiate the, uh, the various liver lesions. Why? Because the same lesion can appear similar on T2 and T1 weighted images. It is just on the contrast that we get to differentiate between FNH and hepatoblastoma. How? Because in the FNH, we used to see that the scar does not enhance first. The lesion enhances intensely more than the adjacent liver, which is actually not happening in the hepatoblastomas. They always show washout and are hypo-enhancing than the adjacent liver. So this is how... Uh, you have to keep all the lesions in your mind when you come across any lesion. Okay, so ju just don't focus on one lesion. So I think by the end of this lecture, uh, once we revise the findings, I think uh, you will get a better idea. <laughs>